Today we're going to talk about creating skin tones with watercolor paints. So I've been watching quite a few different videos on YouTube and I was trying to find information that would help us in our own project with the mixing of skin tones. So I'm going to kind of summarize some of the information I found into this video. So this is the Prang Oval Semi-Moist Watercolors. So I'm going to start by getting my colors wet. And what we're going to look at using is red, orange, yellow, brown, and I'm going to go ahead and wet my blue and my purple. So I'm going to do that with both sets here. That way the colors can start activating, softening up with the water. As we experiment here. And I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit in green also. That was something that was mentioned in a couple different videos. And we'll talk about that. So I'm going to start looking at Caucasian mixes. What I gathered from the videos is these three warm colors are a good beginning for a Caucasian skin tone. So I'm going to take, and I'm using just a styrofoam plate as a mixing palette, I'm going to take some of my colors and transfer them over onto the plate. So I'm going to pick up some yellow, wash out my paintbrush, I'm going to pick up some orange paint. And I'm going to add some red. So I may have a little bit more yellow there than the other two. Probably the least amount used with red. And I'm going to mix these together, all three. And what I'm going to do before anything else is I'm going to test that color on a piece of paper. So this is the color I've made in a solid wash. But one thing when working with Caucasian skin tones that really helps with the skin tone is to thin out the paint. We're looking more at glaze tech, uh, sorry, at a glaze consistency than we are at a solid wash consistency. So if I add more water to my pigment, I'm going to get more of a light peach color. Now this is just a general Caucasian skin color. This is not going to mean that every single Caucasian person is going to be a mixture of this color. This is just a starting point. So the next step is to then start experimenting with what you may need to create your skin color. So if you have a little bit of a tan going on, you may want to bring some brown over onto your plate. And you may want to mix a little bit of brown into that mixture. 
and again we want glaze consistency so I'm adding a lot more water there and I'm going to again test it and what I found helps is as I am creating these test swatches is to label what I have done so whether that's with a pen or a pencil so this is my yellow my orange and my red and this is it as a glaze and then this is with the addition of brown now I'm not measuring anything out but I at least know that this mixture is that little bit of brown I picked up if I wanted to try to add a little bit more brown to that mixture I could come over and pick it up stir it in test swatch it and then once again I can add to my labeling plus brown again As you do this it's good to make little notes on your paper because if you do find a mixture you eventually like then you can go through your notes and see what it is you've done to create that color and it will save you a little bit of time when you try to recreate it you can also try adding more of one of the first initial colors we started with so maybe your skin tone has a bit more of a yellowish undercast. If I add a little bit of yellow into there, I'll put it down here since it's this mixture with some yellow added to it. since I have a lot of this pigment on here I can start pulling off different sections of it and continuing my experimentations so I'm thinning it down to wash consistency again I'm going to pick up some brown into it and this time I'm going to maybe experiment with a little bit more red added to it so notice when I do pick up more color I add it to my palette not directly into my mix that way I can control a little bit how much I'm picking up and bringing over and this is going to be this color with a touch more red to it and brown and I've just continued to mix colors trying to match what my skin tone is so that is a good basis to start Caucasian color mixes so if you're Caucasian you're going to start with those three basic colors plus the addition of possibly some brown and begin to try to create a first base tone of skin color for you Quite a few videos I watched mentioned an olive tone or tan skin tone. For this type of skin tone, there may be the addition of a different color, but it's going to definitely involve a little bit more of the brown spectrum in our Caucasian mix so we're going to start with our Caucasian mix for this skin tone 
and to it we're going to add a little bit more of the brown so again I as I'm mixing this in I'm keeping it off to the side I didn't have a lot there so I am going to drag it over here in fact I'm probably going to add a little bit more but I always try to keep it off to the side because I'd rather control how much I mix in to a color if I end up using it all I end up using it all but if I don't then at least I've controlled that mixture and this is again this more solid wash version of it so as a solid wash it kind of looks like it could be maybe labeled as a burnt orange color and this is going to be of course my yellow my orange my red and brown and I want to see what it looks like as a glaze And when we test swatch, sometimes it's a little difficult to see at first exactly what the color is because watercolor does change appearance as it dries, just like any paint. But I can always tell that comparing this one to this one, it has a little bit more of that beige tone to it. So I might add a little bit more brown see if we can increase that beige tone so we're looking for more of that tanned skin look then we are the peachy skin look so I'm just going to test swatch this down below here since I really didn't add much more than more brown to it and I'll test swatch the initial mixture and we'll see if there's much of a difference when they fully dry Gonna soak up a little bit of that excess water there now some of the videos I watched with this it did mention that olive toned skin so there is a slight difference tan skin of course you're going to see a bit more of the browns added to it than maybe a lighter toned Caucasian skin color but it will involve at times not always maybe a touch of green to it that gives it that definition of the olive toned skin so if you are working, if you have a more tanned complexion and you try the Caucasian version and you tried the olive tone, sorry, the tan version with more brown, and of course this isn't completely done. I can add more brown to this and continue to experiment with it. In fact, on my plate here, I'm going to try to separate these. So I keep some of this tan color to experiment more with. And I'm going to take the other part here and I'm going to add a little touch of the green to see what happens. So when mixing, oh, that was a little bit too much green. So when mixing these colors and when experimenting, that's really all you can do. It's trial and error. So I did get a little bit too much green there. And if that happens, then all I'm going to do is come back to my three original colors, apply some to my palette again. So I've just added some red, some orange, and some yellow. And I'm going to pull some of those colors back into this pigment. But as I was saying, this is all this is. It's experimentation. I'm just trying to give you a idea 
of the colors you would want to start with for your mixture. So I've added a little bit more of those tones in there. Going to give it a test swatch. So this was yellow, orange, red, and I'm going to put two browns. And this is my yellow, orange, red, brown, and a little touch of green. So you can t already start to see a little bit of the difference here. I'm going to try adding a smaller touch of green to it again. And it's amazing how the green affects the color without it looking like alien skin green. Okay, notice that it's reacting most likely, excuse me, reacting most likely to the red that's in there. And we know that red and green are complementary colors. And it's reacting most likely to the yellow also. Yellow's complementary color is blue, and we know there is blue in green also. And they create neutral. So you are starting to get a little bit more of a tan version there. And if I drag some over to create that wash, a little more pigment in there. You can see where I'm definitely creating a little bit more of a tanned skin tone and continuing more of that beige look to it. Now again, this can be adjusted. This can change. And this was my yellow, orange, red, blue, plus two green. And this is the glazed version of it. So this, if I still need to adjust it according to my skin tone, if I am of a tan variety, which obviously Miss Barnett is not, but if I am of a tan variety, then I would maybe play a little bit more with this mixture than I would with the straight up yellow and orange or yellow and orange, sorry, yellow and orange and red, or the yellow, orange and red with just slight amount of brown to it. I would definitely be looking into adding more browns or even a touch of green to my skin tones. And then again, just like I was doing up here though, you can continue to add to it. So you can add more brown to it. You could add more red to it if you wanna see, if you can balance out the beige look with a little bit of a rosiness to it. You can add more yellows to it or more oranges to it. But it is all about experimentation when it comes to skin tones. So, so far we've talked about Caucasian and we've talked about olive slash tan skin tones. Remember olive's going to add that little touch of green to it to continue to bring down the neutral versions of it. Whereas the browns, notice even when I added double brown, it still didn't have much of a rich tan color to it that the green seemed to bring out. So, those are just some experimentations for you to work with for these two skin tones. And we'll talk about brown skin tones next. The last skin tone we are going to discuss is the brown skin tone. Looking at videos, many of the artists who I watched that directly discussed brown skin tones did combine a combination of colors, but unfortunately most of those colors aren't found in your simple Prang watercolor set or even your Crayola set. What they discussed was using colors like sepia, which is not included in this set, or Van Dyke Brown, 
raw umber or burnt umber. So I've been experimenting with what we could do with the brown that's available in a basic eight color watercolor set like Prang or Crayola. So the first thing I want to do is test out this brown color. So I'm going to pull some over onto my plate. And just like what we discussed with Caucasians and olive tone or tan toned skin colors, the color that you end up working with and the colors you mix into it are going to be very personal. They're going to have to be a mixture of colors that create your specific skin tone. So the basis that they always start with is a brown. So I'm going to test swatch this just so I have an idea of what this color of brown looks like exactly on our paper. So I'm going with a watercolor wash of the brown from the Prang watercolor set. Now this still has to dry and as I mentioned before, remember colors will change as they dry. But even looking at it while it's wet, it appears to have a little bit of a reddish tint to it. So it seems to be more of a warm color of brown. So to adjust this would depend on your exact skin color. If you do have a warmer color of brown, you may just have to add and adjust a few things to this color directly out of the set. If you have a cooler color of brown though, you're going to have to figure out what colors will cool down that brown. Now one artist I did view used the color sepia, and as I said, we don't have that one here. And they used a warm color of brown. So there's sepia, though I tend to think of sepia as more of a warmer color of brown. Um, their sepia had a cool tone to it, and that's why they added a warm tone brown to it. And then they also deepened the color with a little bit of violet. Now, since we're already at a warm tone, I'm going to try that out. First of all, I want to see what this looks like in a thinner application. So I'm going to create my glaze. So with this brown color as a glaze, it's going to look like this. So this is my brown and this is of course the wash and this is my glaze. So no other colors have been added to this yet. Now since I only have the one color of brown, I'm limited in any mixing of different browns with it. So all I can control is how warm or how cool this brown could look. So as I mentioned already, uh, one artist that I did watch added a touch of purple to it to get a little bit of a deeper tone of brown. So I'm going to bring some purple paint over here, or violet, over here onto my plate. And again, just like always, I want to be able to control how much is added. And I'm going to pick up some of this and just add a touch of this purple or violet color to my brown. I want a little bit more. To see what it does. So I'm interested to see, we know purple is a cool color, but purple is also made up of a cool color and a warm color. So is the cool color, the blue in the purple mixture, enough to cool down this brown if I needed it. So this is going to be 
Start with a wash. And we'll do a glaze. So I'm going to label, this is my brown plus purple, and of course this is the glaze of it. And it does definitely give it a little bit more of a cooler tone. I'm not noticing that reddish tint as much to the color. It's definitely creating a deeper brown. So let's experiment to see if we added a little bit more purple to it to see what that does to the color. It's like our first wash up there, and I'm not sure if it shows up on camera, but I am definitely noticing the purple undertones. And if I pull that over into a wash, sorry, a glaze, I should have said. If I pull that over into a glaze, what that would look like. And so this is my brown plus two purple additions and of course this is the glaze of it and just like what we did with and talked about with Caucasian and what we talked about with olive tones and tan tones it's now about experimentation what would it look like if I did add more warmth to it but instead of red what if I tried adding some yellow to my mixture. So if I bring some yellow over to my plate, pick some of it up, mix that in, what color of brown tone am I going to get? still has a slight coolness to it, but it's definitely warmer than the one above. Let's try it out as a glaze. So this is this mixture with the addition of yellow. And of course, this is the glaze. See if we added more yellow. Again, the warmth of it is starting to appear, but it's definitely a different warmth from what we started out with, whereas this seemed to have a lot of a reddish undertone. Adding the yellow definitely gives it a different type of warmth in color. So this is once again this color, now with the addition of yellow again, and this is the glaze version of it. And I could keep on going and going and going. I could see what it would look like if I added orange. Is it going to eventually work its way back to the original brown color out of the set? Is it going to be different? What if I added a touch of green to it? We already know that a touch of green in a 
mixture that starts out with the Caucasian mix gives a little bit of a tan glow different from just adding brown to the mixture so it's all about experimentation when it comes to working with skin tones so these are some of my experiments with browns and earlier we did the Caucasian and the olive and tan which of course you know this isn't the end of it this is just a beginning trial and error to see what I can mix and how I can mix colors to create skin tones and especially when I'm working with a limited palette like a Crayola or a Prang palette so just to give you an idea to compare I was using Prang here I start with my Crayola in the mixture that we used for Caucasians so I started with some yellow and again this is the washable set of Crayola and add some orange to my palette I'm already curious as to what this will look like because that orange seems very intense compared to the Prang watercolor set and once again some red I think I'll pull over a little bit more yellow because my first set mixture had more yellow than the others and if I mix these together, get a little more water there. And I test out the wash. Now again, it's going to change as it dries, but it does seem a bit more intense in color, a bit brighter than what the Prang set gave me. So all these were Prang and this is my Crayola. So this is why experimentation is important. What I show you and demonstrate to you works with my specific paint sets and my end goal of my specific in this case skin tone for you you're going to have to figure out what your watercolor set with your colors that you have what it can do so are you working with Caucasian tones then you definitely want to start with that mixture of yellow, orange, and red. If you're working with a tanner skin tone or into that olive tone, then you're going to start with the Caucasian mix and add definitely more browns for a tanner look or even a touch of green, depending on how tan or if you need that olive undertone. And if you're working with brown skin tones then most watercolor sets as I said the eight color watercolor set you're only going to have the option of one brown to use so you're really going to have to experiment with what colors can you add and mix to create the specific tones of your skin so that is your next assignment you are going to experiment with the various colors you have in your palette to develop your skin tone. Once that is complete, then we'll discuss about applying skin tones to your watercolor portrait.